All right, all right, all right. It's uh, <clears throat> it's, or it's Saturday morning, and I thought I'd get out and try to see if I could uh, find any cool records. It's possible, maybe. Um, I mean, it's doubtful. I don't know why I do this to myself. I just walk around these places looking for records. But <clears throat> uh, it's possible. It's a beautiful day, and... Uh, Hopefully, uh, I can find something I'm looking for, something I've uh, been uh, been searching for. So, we'll see if anything turns up. Some interesting stuff in there for sure. They had a record in there that was uh, looked like an old psych record and with a price tag on it said super rare promo $29.99. Look it up. It's just the regular pressing. I, I don't, you know, I don't know who does the research on the records, but they're, they don't know what they're doing. Yo, what's up? Bob here. Welcome to Vinyl Finds on the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. This is number 28. That's right, folks. 28. Found some records, and we're gonna get into them right now. <clears throat> As we've been discussed for the last two weeks, I found some jazz records. I've been waiting to show them to you. Record store day got in the way. Then there was a kind of a classic rock uh, collection that I uh, pulled some records from. And now we're gonna look at these jazz records finally. Got some pretty good stuff. Uh, we're going to get into that in a second. <clears throat> but coming in hot, the very first record, boom, this beautiful copy of John Coltrane's Infinity. That's right, folks. This is a <clears throat> later Coltrane uh, on this Impulse label. <clears throat> you know, pretty much... At this point, John Coltrane is like in the the style that we all know Col Coltrane uh, by. He's um, at this point he's carved out his own way of playing, and uh, he's in full effect here. This is later later on. <clears throat> Next on this impulse label, that's right, guys. Uh, Kulu, see mama. Another Coltrane record. Beautiful condition. Um, once again, just killing. And um, it's a pretty good record. I wouldn't suggest uh, getting every Coltrane record, but if you're a big fan, why not? They're all pretty great. Uh, was super stoked. To get these two Coltrane albums, and um, I'm working my way through his catalog, essentially. Next, boom, miles ahead. That's right, under the direction of Gil Evans. Yeah, 
This is real clean. It's on the Six Eye Columbia label. Boom. That's right. This is an original pressing. <coughs> In mono, by the way. Mono. 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 Uh, again, Miles Davis. Did not have this. Was holding out for a clean copy. And this would be that. <coughs> Porgy and Bess. Also the, with an orchestra under the direction of Gil Evans. Also on that 6i hitter. That's right. Um, a bit about these albums with the... Um, under the direction of Gil Evans, like this minty copy of uh, Sketches of Spain that I got not long ago on Six Nine Label. <sighs> you know, it's inter When I put these records on, it's kind of serves as kind of background music. It's, it's like, uh, it's not really active listening. I put them on and it's just kind of um, saturating uh, the subconscious so that hopefully some of this high quality music will come out through these fingers in some of my own music. You see, the more crap music you listen to, uh, garbage in, garbage out. So uh, I try to subconsciously listen to as much like really high quality stuff, even if it's not my favorite jazz to listen to, um, these Miles Davis records under the direction of Gil Evans are great to just put on in the background and uh, just let them run when you're doing stuff. You know, if I'm cleaning up the house or something, I'll pop one of those on and it'll, uh, it'll get up in my brain. Can we talk about a major score for a second? I'm, I'm talking about a major score. <clears throat> I don't... Listen, I don't always spend a lot of money on records, but it was my birthday. Boom. Lee Morgan. Search for the new land. That's right. Blue Note. Deep Groove. RVG. Uh, first Pressing. Uh, new York. Fantastic record. Lee Morgan, one of the only, uh, one of the few, uh, pretty much Lee Morgan, Miles Davis, that are the only trumpet players that I really tolerate that much. I mean, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but these are the main two. Um, yeah, great record, excellent condition, happy birthday to me. Let's see who else is on here. Wayne Shorter on the sax. Grant Green. Herbie Hancock. Uh, Reginald Workman and Billy Higgins. That's a whole group of straight killers right there. Great shape. Beautiful record. Super stoked to have it. Yeah, so rounding out the jazz. Got the two Miles records. Two Coltrane records. And the Lee Morgan. Uh, yeah, loving that. Uh, working on my jazz. Did I mention that I'm working on my jazz collection? Moving right along. <laughs> Got this, boom, via the interwebs. First pressing, Amy Winehouse, Back to Black. This is a fantastic record. Um, label looks like this. Here's the deal. This sucker was mint condition when I found it on uh, the internet. And I'm not kidding. The dude that shipped me this wrapped it in a brown paper grocery bag and sent it through the mail. So you can see now that it has a, the corner was pretty badly bent. And uh, 
I mean, we, he gave, I, I, you know, he ended up giving me like $3 off the record. And uh, I would have still bought it in this condition, obviously. The vinyl had never been played. A spectacular record. Um, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago when I got the other uh, Amy Winehouse record. I wasn't on board with her originally, but uh, once I got into the Daptone um, record label and started exploring their catalog, I realized that she had done this in that Daptone studio and kind of became a fan. So was really stoked to get that. Last but not least, found this. Re uh, I've had this. Uh, I digitally downloaded this the day it came out. And, uh, you know, had it on CD and whatnot. But it was waiting to find a uh, vinyl copy somewhere without paying the full <laughs> the full sticker price. I finally found one. Uh, this is Tedes Tedeschi Trucks Band. This is uh, Susan Tedeschi and Derek Trucks leading a 12-piece ensemble. Uh, we talked about this because I got the Record Store Day Um album that they well extra record that they put out this is revelator this is their first album this has all the dope songs on it um it has a uh, bound for glory learn how to love and um the you know they, they put that on this hype sticker here bound for glory learn how to love but everybody knows that the track on this record is midnight in harlem it's easily the best song on here why they didn't push that track it doesn't matter they want a grammy for this um i really th they've had several lineup changes since they did this O'Till kofi of course has now passed away um i don't even know if any of these horn players are still in the band uh it seems like they've been doing uh, a lot of lineup changing um this is easily their best record and uh, you know you got to get this if you're interested in the guitar badassery of Derek Trucks. Because that is, without a doubt, their best album. <clears throat> what have I been... Uh, I have been listening to some things this week. Let me, uh, let me, get, let me get those out. Uh, let me show you what I've been listening to. Boom. The Meters strutting. Excellent version of uh, the Wichita Lineman on this. Uh, what's that other song? Uh, hand clapping song. <sighs> um, chicken strut. Uh, there's a. This is an original copy on Josie. Um, these are really hard to come by. Somewhat expensive, as you can see. This one's not real perfect. I mean, there's some ring wear on it and stuff. The vinyl plays excellent. Um, this is probably one of the top five of my just my favorite records in my collection uh the meters strutting i just love the way the cover looks on this and it's just super awesome i picked up this copy of physical graffiti because i learned that my other copy was a club pressing so i've been uh comparing these two uh, pressings of physical graffiti this week. Um, not a whole lot of difference. Once again, a little color variation on the uh, on the covers there. You know, I don't know if you can really tell that just by looking at it, but yeah, a little color variation. Otherwise, though, these songs are uh, the the songs sound pretty similar. Um, everybody knows this record. It's Probably Zeppelin's second or third best record. <clears throat> Speaking of Zeppelin, I've also been rocking this pretty hard. Presence. Do you know what this is? This is the object. A lot of people don't know what that is. This is the this is called the object. And um, back when this came out, you could actually get one of the objects. I think they made a thousand of them, and uh, they were numbered. Really cool. Kind of cryptic um, um, black uh, object, obviously. Uh, 
you know, it's based off that uh, monolith in that in that one movie. Achilles' last stand. Nobody's fault but mine. Hey, people get down on these later Zeppelin records. You can't really get down on this one. This one's badass. So, yeah, been listening to this pretty hard. <clears throat> All right. Uh, sitting here today with Lester Polfus, Les Paul, and. Uh, Put up a uh, video of me and the band doing our thing. A uh, couple uh, newer uh, tracks we've been working on, unrecorded. That said, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, I do have a record that will be coming out soon. More on that later. And uh, I'll be putting some stuff up on the channel about that. I'm out here hunting for records folks i'm looking for the stuff that i really want it's not easy because i have a lot of it my collection is highly curated and uh basically what that means is i've removed a lot of the stuff from my collection that i don't want making it uh smaller but you know very tailored to my taste, and I would consider very high quality. So, I'm working on my jazz. Uh, there are some still rock records that I'm out here looking for, you know, that are hard to get. I'm looking for uh, the other uh, Meters records on uh, Josie, uh, the original pressings of those albums. Still trying to get uh, a new... A uh, better copy of Herbie Hancock and the Headhunters record, you know, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. I did want to say, probably seen all those psych records at the top of the video. Man, those, all those records were overpriced. Whoever looked up that information on those albums, they they were not on point. They were not on point. They they had all that stuff overpriced and. I couldn't buy any of it because I just don't want to pay a bunch of money for something that, when it's not worth it. Um, so I didn't get any of that stuff. You know, I, I that Rotary Connection album I was like was really tempted on, but <clears throat> I didn't get it. All right. Anyway, please like, subscribe, leave some comments down below. I will respond to your comments. Until we meet again, bob out. Did you pick this up? Yeah.